Welcome to Fuel Up and taking a quick look at things I've checked out in sim racing this week. Today's episode features a link to a really good tutorial on how to set up Hue Lighting with SimHub. Driving Ayrton Senna's 98T Lotus, we make a couple pit stops at some other YouTube channels and we check out if sim racing is still interesting or not. Starting out, we take a look at what I did here in the rig. I repositioned my Hue play bars just above on top of my foam board canopy here on the sim rig. And thanks to a awesome tutorial by Alex K, I was able to connect these to sim hub now to operate the ambient lighting in the rig. Here you can see a 24 hour race I set up where I started the race around six in the afternoon and had a 60 time cycle. We head into the overnight and as you can see, the the whole room starts to get darker. I did set up some additional lights, including the play bars. I had a ceiling light and floor lamp, as well as my pedal cam light, all connected to the Hue system. So every light in the room eventually kind of goes out. And you really have a sense that you're driving in the overnight in the race. The competitor car headlights come into the cockpit sometimes as well, adding some ambient light that looks really, really cool. And as the sun starts to rise and you turn into the rising sun, you, you really get a blinding glow in your room of that light flooding the cockpit uh, during that part of the race. Thanks again to Alex K. I'll leave a link in the description to the original tutorial he did. A really great way to connect your hue lighting and integrate it with SimHub. It provides a much more accurate setup for where you want the light to be picked up inside of the cockpit, off the dashboard or the A pillar, etc. So check that video out, see how Alex did that. It really was helpful for me in getting my Hue light bars set up and I had a really good experience testing it out. We're in Spain now for three laps at Jerez where the Formula One event was held 13th of April, 1986. Ayrton Senna narrowly edging out Nigel Mansell for the win. Pretty exciting event. At this point, they had banned all of the naturally aspirated engines, so it was all turbos on the track. Mansell almost chased down Senna after he had come in for a fresh set of tires. He had much more tread than Ayrton did for the last bit of the race but Senna did hold on for the victory. Finishing third was Prost, who we're trying to get around now in this race. You're seeing highlights of this. You'll see the whole video uh, hopefully next week sometime. Of course, this gave me a really good chance to put my new 3D wrap Lotus 98T replica rim through its paces at just 260 millimeters in diameter. It's very responsive and lets you know exactly when the rear end of these turbocharged F1 cars in AMS2 start to lose their grip and you can catch sides quite a bit easier than a more dampened, heavier wheel rim. I also did a short video review of this earlier in the week. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. I also linked to a couple of more seasoned YouTubers who have done reviews on the 3D wrap products that they've tried out. For fans of VR, check out Owen Evans' channel. I'll put a link in the description to his latest video where he tests how good the AI actually is in AMS2. He drives the BMW M1 Pro car at Historic Spielberg against a full grid. The AI set to 100%, I believe, and he used some historic weather. The track might have been a little bit damp, Stick around to the end of Owen's video and see how he fares. See if he owes the track any money for Armco repairs. Another video I'll link to is from Danny Moffat, who recently picked up a SimiQ2 Pro. He just got it a couple weeks ago, and here he is exploring the True Drive software and the different force feedback profiles you can download from the community. There was an interesting discussion in the comments below about whether to run your SimiCube 2 Pro at 100% within TrueDrive and then adjust the values for force feedback within the game or vice versa. And like Danny, I've had a few scary moments where running the force feedback at 100% on the SimiCube 2 Pro, which goes up to, I believe, 25 newton meters of strength, uh, could be a little bit frightening for the old wrists and thumbs. 
So I've opted to go with a 60% force in True Drive and then adjust from there within the game. I still feel like I have a ton of fidelity left and headroom, but let me know in the comments if you're a Simicube 2 Pro owner and what you've done in your setup and what kind of experiences you've had. But check out Danny's video if you are interested in getting a Simicube 2 Pro and he kind of covers the basics as a newcomer to the True Drive software. Scotty B Cards recently put out a video where he used the search term baseball cards to check out the interest over time on Google Trends for that hobby. I wanted to try the same thing with sim racing and explore what kind of peaks and valleys sim racing has gone through in interest over the past while. Heading over there, I see the rest of Canada is searching for information about the extreme cold warnings that some of us are experiencing. Minus 45 with the wind chill in Manitoba earlier today. Yikes. So we will punch in sim racing. And along with that, we're going to change a couple of the filters. Let's change this to worldwide since sim racing is more of an international hobby. We have a really great community all around the world. And let's go to results from all time all the way back to 2004 we'll start out with the web search and you can see a spike here in 2005 this is when youtube started so i would imagine that would correlate with that event 2008 i'm not really sure there was a housing crisis in the u.s let me know if you think that would have had any influence on the worldwide interest in sim racing i'm not sure that it would maybe there's some other event that happened there and then we kind of have a valley around this point. I guess you could almost call this a dark time of sim racing. Really low interest uh, heading through 2015 all the way to 2017. I have a couple of ideas. Let me know in the comments what you think would have caused this. But there was definitely not as much gear to check out. In those days, we had the same kind of Logitech wheels year after year. And the same ecosystem from Fanatec had been around for a while as well. The Load cell pedal was still not quite a thing in popularity, as well as direct drive wheels were still very, very expensive. And I know I wasn't particularly researching any of those kinds of items in 2015 just because they were so prohibitive in the cost. Whereas nowadays we have quite a few options from a variety of manufacturers for pedals and wheel bases and all kinds of accessories. So there's just a lot more to research before you spend your hard-earned money. And I think that would lead to this upward trend that we're seeing here. Obviously, we had this worldwide event that caused everyone to be locked in for a while and caused a big spike in a lot of hobbies, things to do around the house to avoid going crazy. I luckily got my SimLab GT1 Evo just before the event that took place in 2020. Just in January, I think I bought the GT1 Evo and luckily got my order in before everyone got slammed with the orders. And I'm sure a lot of you out there had to wait a little bit longer for your gear as the manufacturers tried to keep up with all of the demand. And after that ended, we still see a steady increase in the popularity and interest in sim racing. Uh, this would have been the holiday period, people doing their holiday research for shopping and all the way through last year 2023 looked to be a very good year in sim racing so i think we'll see a very similar trend if we look at youtube we'll quickly just jump over to that chart but take a look at this yourselves let me know what you think would have caused the ebb and flow in interest in sim racing over there over the years and uh, some of you might have some unique insight into what you think would cause the uh, ups and downs in interest in the hobby. Thanks again to Scotty B Cards for the inspiration for this little look at our sim racing search term in Google Trends. I'll leave a link to his video in the description. You can go check that out if you're interested in sports cards and Pokemon cards. He even covers a little bit of the history of the interest over time on those as well. That's a wrap on this week's Fuel Up. Hope you found it interesting. I tried to make it a variety of subjects about things that I kind of discovered over the last week in sim racing there's always something new to try and lots of 
other content from the community to check out on YouTube as well. Let me know anything that you've seen lately in the comments that you think is interesting and I'll go check that out as well. Have a great rest of your day.